Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to Six Simple Ways to Show Your Appreciation So Your Customers Stay Loyal to You. This is Caroline Cooper, and welcome to those of you who are already on the line. I can see that there are a few more people still joining us, so we'll just hang on for um, a couple more seconds. For those of you on the line, can I ask you if you can just, uh, you'll see there's a little dashboard. I'll just click onto the next slide so you know what I'm talking about. Uh, you'll see there's a, a little uh, screen, something like this. Oh, apologies for this pop-up. Um, so if you can see this, uh, you'll see there's a little hand here. Can you just raise your hands to let me know, first of all, that you can see the screen okay? Brilliant, thank you. And that assumes also that you can hear me, so that's fantastic. Thank you very much, everyone. I'll just pop all your hands back down again. Thank you. Okay, I think we'll make a start anyway because it's uh, it's just gone three o'clock. So welcome everyone. Let's just go back to the initial screen. So as I said, six simple ways to show your appreciation so your customers stay loyal to you. So they're not going to go off and uh, go and patronise your competition. So as I said, uh, the little screen here, this is how to, to participate today. So if you've got any questions, you'll see on the right hand side there's a little question box. So if you'd like to type your questions in there and I'll try and keep up with the questions. Sometimes I find it a little bit of a distraction to read the questions and talk at the same time. So forgive me if I don't respond to questions straight away. Equally, if anything's going wrong, so if you can't hear me or we lose the image, anything like that, just raise your hand or pop a question in the question box and I will um, try and respond to that as quickly as possible. Obviously, if you all do that, then I'll know that something's gone disastrously disastrously wrong. Um, I am recording this session and you will get a recording afterwards. So if you want to take notes, that's absolutely fantastic. I'd obviously love you to do that. The more you can participate, the better. And uh, equally, if you'd rather just listen, then that's fine. Um, it will, you'll get the recording so you can take notes from that if that's your preference. So what are we going to be covering today? Well, first of all, just like to go through the, the uh, objectives. So, first of all, we're going to be looking at the quickest and easiest route to getting your customers talking about you, um, and obviously all the positive things about you, so how we would do that. We're going to be looking at key questions that you need to be asking of your customers, and why you need to be asking those. So, in other words, getting that feed, that all-important feedback, and there are ways to do that that's going to give you valuable feedback, uh, and there are ways to do it which won't be very helpful at all. Five cost-effective ways to make, make your loyal customers feel really special. Um, today is all, of, all about appreciation, and if people don't, um, don't feel appreciated, then certainly they won't feel special, and they're not going to come back again. So the whole emphasis of today is thinking about that repeat business and getting those referrals. Uh, how to convert one-time customers into repeat customers and referrals. So just mentioned there about referrals. Um, if you, the amount of effort that goes into getting people coming to you for the very first time, if they don't come back again, you've got to start that all over again. And it's a massive strain physically, mentally, and also a massive strain on your marketing budget. So the more people you can get coming back, then obviously the better that's going to be for your business. And then finally, five ways to wow your customers um, on their next visit, because it's all very well them coming back again. But, you know, if you've ever been somewhere a second time or worked with a business a second time and you think, oh, actually, it's all gone a little bit downhill. So what can we be doing to avoid that, that happening so that they keep coming back? So not just a second time, but a third time, even a 30th time to your business. Now, before we launch into all of that, um, for those of you who don't know me, forgive me for, for those of you who already know me quite well. I, I, looking at some of the names on the attendee list, I know some of you do know me fairly well already. Um, but a little bit about me. I'm Caroline Cooper. My business is, is Naturally Loyal. Naturally Loyal actually in its present format has only been going for um, just over six months and is uh, evolving a little bit. Uh, 
Um, here's a little bit about my this. So this says a little bit about my background. I currently um, I, I write a lot on the customer experience. So a couple of examples there. Sometimes online, sometimes offline. I have a book called the Hotel Success Handbook, which is sort of fifty percent marketing and fifty percent about the the guest experience. And I also sometimes speak at events. This is me at an event last year where I was one of the one of the speakers at the um, hotel and catering uh, marketing seminar. And what Naturally Loyal is all about is helping businesses to develop their teams to consistently deliver outstanding customer experiences and create naturally loyal customers. And I do that in three ways. The uh, the first way is to ensure that the business really knows what its expectations are in terms of cust the customer experience. What is it that you're trying to achieve? What's the experience that you want your customers to get? So effectively, this is about writing the rules. What are the guidelines for everybody in your in your business? Then looking at upskilling up the team because it's all very well them knowing what's expected of them, but they then need the skills and just as importantly the confidence and the authority to deliver that and then finally where businesses need this and that's not in all cases is looking at the support that is there for the team because if you as the business owner are not setting the best example then you can't necessarily expect your team to deliver that experience that outstanding experience for your customers if you're not doing it yourself I'm not suggesting that's the case but some you know the more, the more subtle things around that as, as well so that you're supporting them in every way that you can. So those are the three ways in which I deliver that uh, um, that support for businesses. So some of that is formal training, some of that's facilitation, and the last one is a combination of sometimes it, it's it's formal training, and, and very often it's mentoring and coaching. So that's a little bit about me and naturally loyal and. Uh, sort of putting this into context of loyalty is there are seven elements of this and I'm not going to uh, go into detail on any of those on any of these but I believe there are seven fundamental things that need to be in place if you're going to get that loyalty first of all you've got to love your customers and have that empathy with them understand them then you need to be giving them outstanding experiences we need to be getting them to encouraging them to spend more with us but in a, in a, a way that they feel comfortable that it's not the pushy hard sell and for those of you who were with me last month on last month's webinar I, I spoke more about that today is all about this, showing your your customers that appreciation and it le that very much leads into the leveraging the lifetime value because if customers don't feel appreciated they're not going to come back so we're going to be touching on that that lifetime value it's about having a trusted team people that you know will do can, deliver and deliver consistently even when you're not there because you know no business can survive with you know you never being able to take holiday or take time out or even having a day out to be whatever that is you know personal development a, a day's holiday entertaining customers or meeting with customers and not having a team then that's going to actually deliver what you expect of them so ha having that trust in your team and of course you and how you come across and what you're doing with your customers and how you come up, come over to them and to your, to your team so those are the seven elements that when I'm working with clients that we might work on one or two of those we might work on all seven depending on what their needs are so enough of that let's crack on with today's topic so six ways to show your appreciation so this is going to be our agenda for this afternoon we're going to be talking about how to get your customers talking about you after they've done business with you we're going to be talking about the type of questions that we need to be asking them after they have done business with you we're going to be talking about how do we make them feel really special how do we get to convert them into loyal customers who keep coming back time and time again and how are we going to wow them when they come back you know they might have been wowed the first time but how do we actually keep that going so before we do any of that I would just like to think about well actually why is all of this important why do we need to show our appreciation well I think there are three three reasons first of all if we value our customers, let them know 
that we value them. Because you know how sometimes you, you go somewhere and you think, hmm, well, they're obviously very keen for our business because they've been chasing us and chasing us and chasing us and they've been bombarding us with information. And now they've got us here? Huh. I don't think that they really even want, you know, you get that feeling that they don't really want you there. Now, they probably do, but they're not very good at actually showing it. So actually showing, an, uh, showing your customers that you value them. It's also about the law of, of, of uh, reciprocity, and I'm sure that those of you who know me, you will have heard me talk about this before, but if you give something to your customers, and that, you know, I'm not talking here about, you know, undercharging them or giving away stuff for free, but those little personal touches, for example, that they actually then feel that they want to give something back. So it's a little bit of a psychological um, exchange here. And then the third reason is that it helps to build that connection. It helps to build that rapport with your customers so that um, what, the more you've got that, the more likely they are that actually while they're, while they're currently doing business with you, they're far more likely to buy more from you. They're far more likely to come back to you. And if you've got that connection and that rapport, they're far more likely to give you feedback. And they're going to feel far more comfortable about making referrals and recommending you to other people. So that, those are the three key reasons why I think it's very important for you to show your appreciation to your customers. So let's have a look at how we do that. Now, um, you may have noticed actually in the agenda, I only had five points and I almost felt embarrassed to put the first, the, the first point in, but I'm going to say it anyway. Because the first thing is to show that you care. And this goes back, remember what I was saying um, on the last slide about feeling valued, sometimes you just don't feel that that business cares about you. So how do we do this? Well, I've got three points here. First of all, we need to engage with them, and, and that's not just engaging with them while they're doing business with you, but the whole process, the whole of that customer journey. And uh, many of you will have heard me you know, talk about that customer journey before. And I think it was two months ago, three months ago, my webinar on, we talked about six ways to engage with your audience and conscious that some of you will already have, have heard all of that. So I'm just going to pre-see some of that now. And, and you know, gauge in terms of the type of language that you use initially so that there is that connection between you and your, at this stage, maybe your, your audience or your prospective prospective customers. Engaging with them that if they've made an inquiry, that you're asking questions, if they've made a, um, if they've booked something or ordering ordered something from you, that it's not all automated, that they get something that just shows that there is that human being behind things. Once they're in your business or doing business with you, that you're keeping in touch with them, and then afterwards that you're, you're staying in touch with them. And I'm going to talk more about that afterwards a little bit later on in this afternoon's webinar. Second point about giving them great experiences, not mediocre experiences or okay experiences, but make sure that it's, it's seamless, it's a great experience from start to finish. And that, yeah, we all know that things go wrong. And if you follow my blog or if you get my newsletter, you'll know I talked about, you know, recently I've talked in a couple of them about, you know, when stuff does go wrong, but how you then handle that and, and overcome it, show that you care, that if there's a problem, that you care about putting it right. And then the final point about those last impressions, and again, I, I've talked about this before, but in terms of showing your appreciation, is that that sincere thank you when people leave, rather than somebody just going through the motions of, have a nice day now. And we know it's scripted, we, you know, there's, there's nothing in there that actually speaks of sincerity in any way. So making sure that last impression just actually make you think, yeah, actually, I think that they do. Um, appreciate my custom. And we've all experienced, you know, not only the, the, the insincere have a nice day, but that feeling that they're just, they can't wait to get rid of you, they can't wait to get you out of the door, whether that's literally or metaphorically. And I always think about, I, I used to have a, a, um, a, a friend of mine whose mother actually died sadly last month. And she would, you know, she'd, she'd had enough. She'd get the Hoover out. You knew it was time to go home. And um, 
you know, that, that was the impression, the, that last impression as you left there was, oh, she wanted to get rid of me. <laughs> obviously not what you want to create with your customers. So showing that you care, obviously, is, is absolutely key. But let's now look at the other five areas as well. So how do we um, get people talking about us? The importance of getting people talking about you is that then other people get to hear about you. You're staying on people's radar. So the more that you can encourage this to happen, the better. So how, how are we going to do this? Well, one of the first things that we can do is to give them something that helps them to remember us. Um, just giving little mementos, and I don't mean massive gifts, just something that that's somebody, something tangible for people to take away, or even just a little memory for people to take away with them. Something that you've done for them, something that you do for them in the last few minutes of the of them being with you, sending them something after they've been working with you as a reminder of what you discussed. So depending on the type of business, it could be you know, a little summary of, 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 of what you've done and some of the points that they want to, re want to remember if you're in this sort of information giving type of business. If you are um, a hospitality business, it could be um, quite often give the example, for example, for, for a bed and breakfast, you know, they really like the, the jam that you've had at breakfast. Well, if you, you know, have some little sample pots of that, or even maybe just a recipe of something, of how, you, how you've made something, something for them to take away. The next one, just bear in mind, the topic of today's session um, is going to sound blindingly obvious, but I'm always amazed at how few people do it, and that is to actually to verbally say thank you. So we've talked about the, the sincere thank you as people are leaving, but follow that up. If, you, if I was to ask you just to think back over the people that you have done business with in the last, where are we now, uh, yes, in the last three months, and I'd love you just to put your responses to this in the question box, how many of you or how many of the businesses that you have done business with have ever sent you anything afterwards that says thank you? A thank you card, a little note, even a, just a, 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 an email saying thank you. Anybody? Just put a zero in the question box if, if it's none. And I know you're still with me and you're all still listening. Okay, so yes, we have some zeros going in the question box. Hmm. Says it all really, doesn't it? So if you were to send out a little thank you thank you note in some shape or form to your customers, it's so simple, but you are going to stand out over and above everybody else. It stands to reason. And how much does a little note lit cost that you can stick in an envelope with their address on? Okay, even allowing for first-class postage, which seems to go up every other week. Um, you know, if you, if you have a box, you don't necessarily need to go and buy a, you know, fancy uh, card from a, from a card shop. You know, just get a box of little notebooks is better than nothing that with, with, with thank you on. Yeah, better if you can actually do it with um, something that is a bit more personal to them. But, you know, the most that's going to cost you is pound fifty. It's nothing. And if that helps you keep that client, then that's, that, in my mind, is money very well spent. But it doesn't have to obviously just be a card. It could be something, you know, scale that up dependent on the value of that customer. And you might actually send them something that's a little bit more tangible. You know, if it's appropriate, sending them a, a thank you with a bunch of flowers. Um, I was uh, talking to a, a mortgage advisor on Friday. And we talked with him about sending a little hamper so that when people move in, you know, they don't have to worry about finding the tea and the biscuits and all of those things. Having a nice hamper when they move into their new home as a thank you for, for working with him. So you can tailor that to match your business. Thirdly, personalise that thank you to, to them. So whatever your follow-up is, make it relevant. So, you know, coming back to the mortgage advisor, if he had been 
for example, doing, um, he also does pensions um, and um, will writing. So something like a hamper may not be appropriate in that particular situation. So you might tailor it for the particular product that you have, that they have bought from you or the particular service that they have bought from you. And the fourth thing you can do is actually do something for them. And I don't mean here um, something that you've already agreed that you're going to do. This is more to do with something that they're not expecting. Okay, they're not going to be expecting a little card, but what they might not be expecting is a little bit of information that you send through to them unprompted. Um, do you remember the, the uh, post office advert that said, used to say, I saw this and I thought of you? Just doing something like that as a little follow-up is a great way to think, oh, that was a really nice touch. Or it could be that you refer them on to somebody else. You know, if, they, if your business, if your B2B rather than B2C, it could be that they've got their own business and you then refer them to what to somebody else or one of your customers. So you're getting that, coming back to that uh, reciprocity, um, you're doing something for them, they then feel that they want to do something for you. So those are, those are four you know, very inexpensive ways of getting people talking about you. And yes, okay, there may be a little bit of expense if you're going to give them a memento, but I'm talking about things here that cost a pound or a fiver, not things that are costing hundreds of pounds. So how do we get, what are the sorts of questions that you need to be asking? Um, and your know, questions are very important, but the way in which you ask your questions, when you ask them, and then what you do with the information that you've gleaned, is just as important. So if we think about, first of all, well, why would we want feedback in the first place? Well, if we don't get any feedback, first of all, for us, um, Getting feedback means that we then know the things that are working well and that our, our customers like, and we're also, we also know the things that we need to work on and the things that we need to improve and develop. So, you know, that's very important to us. But in the context of showing our appreciation for our customers, if somebody, where you are a customer, so one of your um, suppliers or someone that you buy from asks for your feedback, doesn't it actually make you feel a little bit, a uh, bit special, a little bit flattered that they value your opinion if they ask for your opinion on something, or if they, you know, simply ask how things are versus totally ignoring you, just doing the transaction and then moving on to the next customer? It has quite a big impact, doesn't it? That they actually show that they're interested. So, asking questions, but of course, as I said, the type of questions that you ask are also important. So, the types of questions that we need to be thinking about, as far as possible, we want to be aiming for open questions. Now, it doesn't mean to say that there isn't a place for closed questions, but if you think about how often you get asked, was everything all right? And your simple answer is, um, yes, fine, thanks. Because it's not very specific, it's too easy just to say yes or no. Um, and 90% of the time, people don't say no even when they've had a bad experience, they're far more inclined to say, yeah, it was okay. So we want to be getting into some specifics. So the, the who, the when, the where, the how, the what, uh, why, be careful with why, it can sound a little bit um, challenging or interrogation if we're not careful. But they're the types of questions that will be most useful to us in terms of gleaning some feedback uh, and getting into some specifics. Which really brings me on to my next point is about being specific. So if you've, let's say you've just introduced something new and you'd like some feedback on whatever your new product is or if maybe you've, you've tweaked something and you ask a customer, oh, how was everything today? Open question, so on the surface of it, sounds fine. And they say, oh, yeah, it's really good, thank you. Um, what you really wanted to hear was to get some feedback on a particular element of that. We'll build that into the question. So let's say, I don't know, let's just be, that you've changed the colour of something for the sake of argument. You know, ask specifically, oh, what do you think of the new colour scheme? 
you know, because everything could have been okay, but they might be thinking, hmm, I'm not quite sure about that colour. Um, so you're getting into some specifics. So if you want specific feedback on something specific, ask for specifics. It sounds obvious, but we, you know, it's easy for us not to do. We're not careful. We might also want to ask questions to clarify. So uh, what do I mean here? Well, let's say that somebody says, yeah, everything was okay, but I wasn't, um, yeah, yeah, everything was okay, not as good as last time I came. So we go, oh, right, okay. So, you know, you're left wondering sometimes, well, what was different? Where have we fallen short this time? What didn't we deliver this time that they got last time? Ask the question. Um, not in a, oh, what do you mean, sort of way, but more in a, oh, so what disappointed you this time or, or where, do, where do you feel that we fell short this time? So again, what you're doing is you're just digging, you're just asking for some clarification on what they meant because if you don't know what they mean, how on earth can you put it right? You might also ask for some examples. So they might say, oh yeah, have we, yeah we've had a lovely time, thanks very much. Yeah, love your new dessert menu. And you go, mm, right, okay, so I wonder what things on the dessert. So, can, oh, can you give me an example? Or let's say, oh, one of your, one of your um, team was, was actually a little bit abrupt with me. Oh, really? Oh, what sort of things did they say? So, again, you're asking for six, some examples. So, it's similar to the clarifying, and it's, similar, it's still asking for specifics, but you're sort of drilling down, really. And the more you can get examples, then, again, the easier it is. And if you think about it, all of these things actually are part of showing that we care, that we're not just asking for feedback for going through the motions, we're asking feedback because we are genuinely interested in getting that feedback so that we can do something about it. And the final point on, on, on asking questions is to help people with their priority, we ask for priorities. So let's say somebody says that, oh well actually you know what would be really nice is if you did X, Y and Z and you know that you can't do all three and I don't know whether you, if you think about that this sort of like a, a triangle of, you know, cost, quality and time. So if one of those things is to do with cost. Oh, it would be really good if you could have it at a lower price, higher quality, and you delivered it in less time. Well, actually, those three things don't go together. You're always going to have to lose one of, one of those at the expense of the others. So ask people all of those three things, which would be the most important to you. So again, you are then in a better position to satisfy that customer so you're you know you're able to respond to their request but you're responding to the right thing so it helps you as well so you know you know where you need to put your energies so gathering feedback is a win-win another thing to think about with your feedback is to think about when you ask for the feedback now um, one of the things that, that I, I know a lot of you will be very keen to do very often is to get testimonials. Now, if you ever ask for a testimonial or you're asking for some feedback, but it's six months down the track, you can't remember. So the quicker you ask for feedback, whatever format that takes, then the easier it is going to be for your customer to give you that feedback. And the more accurate it's going to be, the more useful it's going to be as well, because they'll be able to remember the specifics, they'll be able to remember the examples. And the quicker you get that feedback, if you need to act on it, the quicker you're in a position to, to act on it as well. So when is the best time to get feedback? While the customer is still with you, or while they are actually still using the product or the service that you have supplied them with, and failing that immediately after they have finished um, putting it, utilizing it, so that it's all still fresh. So let's say, for example, um, let's say you've just bought a new Hoover or a new vacuum cleaner, should I say, you've bought a new vacuum cleaner and, th and they ask, and whoever the manufacturer is, asks you for, for feedback, um, but you've not yet had a chance to use it, it's been delivered, well, all they can get feedback on at that point is the order process and the delivery process, but you're not in a position yet to give feedback on how good the product is because you haven't even got it out of the box yet. Or um, one of my irritations from my background in hospitality is when you've just got your meal and you're, you, you know, you're in a restaurant, you've just got your meal and somebody comes and oh, you just put your first mouth in and they come and ask you if everything's okay. Well, you can't answer them because you've got your first mouthful in. Um, so 
if you, you know, just just think about about your timing. Um, I'm just quickly going to answer a question uh, for somebody on the line asking when is the webinar going to be done again. I'm gathering that you're going to have to to jump off the off the call, and just to let you know, you'll get automatically get a recording of this. Um, later on today so don't worry about that if you have to if you have to jump off the call now you'll get it through later anyway okay so I hope that's answered your question um, so yeah thinking about your thinking about your timing when you ask the question so as soon as possible afterwards but not so soon that people actually haven't got a, a, an opinion at that at that stage and the other thing to think about with your questions is make sure then that you feed back what you've done. Now this actually is a great way to continue to engage with your customers. But if you've taken action on the feedback that you've got, let them know that you've taken that action. Because they'll think, oh, well it was worth feeding back, because then that opens the door for more feedback. You know when you get, uh, you, you know people, mo quite often complain about things. You say, well, why don't you complain? You know, do something, complain. Oh, I tried it before and they didn't do anything anyway. So what's the point? You obviously don't want people saying that about your business. So encourage people to feedback uh, and, and then get back to them. Let them know what you've done with the feedback. Okay, so that's about asking questions, how to ask questions, what to ask and why you need to ask them. So the next of our points is how to make people feel really special. So yeah, you can apply them with lots of gifts. That's yep does does help. Um, but if what you've got in your you know it's it's not all about the wrapping. You could open up those gifts and there's absolute rubbish in there. So what do we need to be doing to make sure that um, it's it really does make them feel special? So, um, let's think about what, what does make things special. Well, to my mind, it's all about exclusivity. So, I'm going to ask you a question here. Think back to, if you think about what's in your purse, wallet, whatever, and just a show of hands, how many of you have um, loyalty cards of some description in your in your purse. Let's just do a quick show of hands. Who has loyalty cards in their bag or in their wallets? Okay, that's thirty percent of you have raised your hands. Okay, so let's just pop your hands down. And of those cards that you have in your wallets, would you say how how many of you would say that you actually that having those cards makes you loyal to that business and makes you go back. Okay, I think most of you that, yep, yeah, some, okay, a few more coming saying yes. So, uh, let's take your hands down again. Okay, so are there other businesses that you remain loyal to despite the fact that you don't have loyalty cards. Yes. Okay. So I'm going to ask, and I'm going to ask you just to type your responses into the thing, into the question box. What are the types of things that make you, either through that loyalty card or other businesses that you remain loyal to, what are the types of things that make you continue to do business? with that company or with that other with that business. So let's just have a few suggestions of the types of things that people do. Okay, getting something for free, quality. Something a bit different. I feel valued. Uh, I get special access. Brilliant. Okay, so if we think about some of this is to do with some of it is actually to do with 
patents, like the special access, is about ex being exclusive. Getting something free is, 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 is great, provided, of course, it's something that you want. Because if it's something that you don't want, then it obviously d it diminishes its value. So these are things that I believe make fit people feel, feel special. Um, first of all, that they are things that are only available to what I've, I've classed here as members. So it's like a sort of members only club, it's sort of private exclusivity. And so, I mean, the classic is that you see something that is a you know, free gift that's going out to entice new customers in. You say, hang on a minute, I'm already a loyal customer to them. Why don't I get, why, why don't I get that? And actually, for people that are already customers, it just encourages them to go elsewhere and start shopping around. I get really, really angry. And I think, actually, no, I don't appreciate my custom. I might go elsewhere. So, oh, somebody's written in about uh, Amazon. So, um, Liz, what is it about Amazon that makes you, oh, and we've got Virgin Media as well, do that. Oh, most, oh right, okay, yeah, they do that, most frustrating. <laughs> um, yeah, so, you know, if we've got something that's actually only for members, then that's something that is far more likely to make us feel, yeah, they, they value, our, value us. And it's a way of saying thank you. It's another way. It's a different way of saying thank you. And it's something that's maybe a little bit more tangible than the, you know, the, the thank you card that might come immediately afterwards. The second thing that I think actually helps is, is or a way of doing it is by doing something. And I've, I've just turned this as, as, as previews. But it might be, for example, let's say um, you've got something new. So you have a preview. Um, but that preview might also be an opportunity that it's not available yet on the open market. So you're using it as a little bit of a taster. So I'm going to come back to the restaurant example again, if I may. Is that you have a new menu or you're about to launch a new menu. But what you do is you invite some of your regulars in for a bit of a taster to come and seek their opinion. So you're flattering them that, that you value their opinion, that it's important to you that they like what you're going to put on your new menu. They're getting a taster, so they think, oh, yeah, and so they've had an opportunity to feedback. You might actually tweak it. But do you know that makes them feel really Because they're getting something for free. So you're getting something for free, but there is, a, there is another motive for you as well because you're getting something back because you're getting that feedback in. And the other great thing about it is that assuming that they like your new menu, they will go and tell other people about, um, about how good it is. So there is a there's a spin off from those previews. Uh, I also have a friend who works for a a um, actually she's just changed roles, but she used to work for Film Bank where they, they provide all of the um, well not all of them but a lot of the films that you when you when you're in a hotel room a lot of the movies that you'll see are delivered by Film Bank. And what they do is they do some, they do special previews. So I've been invited to a few of those previews, which is a great way to just you know get people talking about a new film. It makes me feel nice. It makes me feel good. Um, the third way is by having something which are privileges. So these might be sort of special services that aren't available to to your to other people. It might be special deals that are available on the open market. They're only available, and that might be something that's tiered. It might not just be you know. Uh, something that's available to, to all of your customers, but only customers that have been with you for X amount of time or done X amount of business with you. Um, so you're just adding in that extra dimension um, and recognizing maybe a particular level of loyalty. You might have something that fast tracks. So um, an example that I'm sure we can all relate to is that when you um, call particularly a utilities company or a bank that you, there is the same phone number irrespective of whether you're an existing customer, you're a new customer, you're a business customer, you all have to go through this, dial one for this, two for that, three for that, four for that and then you get through to another series of things and all you want to do is speak to the same person that you spoke to yesterday or ten minutes ago and you have to go through all that rigmarole. Well Fast Track gives them a direct number to phone. Um, be the first to hear about stuff. So people are, okay, you might have that people on your mailing list anyway, but you might segment your mailing list so that people who actually, 
physical customers rather than prospects get to hear about things first that are in short supply. And it may not even be stuff that you supply. It could be something that you know um, could be a third party or one of your joint venture partners. But they're things that are quite difficult to get hold of, like theatre tickets or concerts tickets or something of that nature. Fast track um, could be literally, you know, the express line. And I'll tell you, I was uh, recounted this story on Friday um, in a session when we were talking about fast track. And somebody asked me for an example, and um, if any of you've ever been to New York and been up the Empire State Building. You have to queue for quite a long time. <laughs> um, but there is an option to, have to buy an express ticket. And you know, when you've bought that express ticket, you feel great bypassing all of the queues. <laughs> so it could be as simple as that. But you know, applying that to your business. Um, and then the final one is about what I would refer to as special access. So that might be special access. It might be physical ac access. So you know, when you go to the airport, if you are um, have a club card or a um, you know, special membership where you can go into a particular lounge, for example. So it might be physical access or it might be an online access to materials. It might be access to certain people for uh, special information or for particular advice, um, you know, that you have got a third party uh, joint venture partner who, for example, IT support. I was with somebody yesterday and part of one of his programs is that people get access to his IT team and, you know, that's that very privileged access. Thinking about the, the amount of frustrations that we all get with our IT systems. Um, so that's worth a lot. So here's what he, what he refers to as his members only. So in terms of making people feel special, it doesn't have to, you know, we can be a little bit creative about this, but the key thing is it needs to be something that people, not everybody is going to get. This is only for your existing customers and let them know it's only available. So, you know, when you write to them as a privileged customer or as a valuable customer, I would like you to invite you to whatever it is be part of this. So those are five ways to make people feel special. Let's now think about once we've made people feel special, how do we now get those people converted into uh, regular buyers? So we had a one-time buyer, so you know they've been a passing trade, they've done business with us once, um, and you know we want to get them back again. So how are we going to convert them into, into naturally loyal customers? Well, the first and most simple and most obvious thing is stay in touch with them. Stay on their radar because it doesn't take very long for them to get swamped with seeing stuff from your competitors or somebody else that does something similar to you and before you know it, they get sucked into what they're doing. You need to keep chipping away at it. And I know people get very concerned about oh, well, I don't want to bombard them with information. But the thing is, the truth is, they're going to get bombarded anyway, so they might just as well get bombarded with, with your stuff. But it's not bombarding them if you are giving them something of value that they're, they're happy to have. So make sure that when you stay in touch, they're telling, you're telling them about things that they want to hear about. So we think back to engaging with your customers early on. The more you know about them, the easier that's going to be. So give them something of value. We've talked about listening to their feedback. So again, this is a way of having listened to it is then demonstrating back to them what we've done with that feedback because then that's another way. You know, come, I'll come and see what we've done or the changes that we've made. Or thank you very much for that feedback. You'll be delighted to know that we have now introduced that particular product. Why don't you come, and, come in and try it for yourself? Or words to that effect. We need to be giving them some sort of incentives to return. You know, if nothing's changed or it's the same old thing, there is an incentive. So what's new? What, what, it, what deals have you got? We talked about those, those uh, privileged deals for existing customers. T talk about those things so that we can use that as a vehicle to get people back again. Ask them to invite other people, so have something that's special. That makes them feel good, that they're then able to pass on a gift 
to somebody else. So for example, um, if you are something like a photographer and somebody already had a portrait photograph of you, they don't want another portrait photograph, they don't want another family photograph, but they would feel great if they could pass on a voucher that they could then give to, to, to friends or other members of their family. And then that makes them feel good. They've, they've given them a, a gift effectively. And then that's actually like a great way to get you new business as well as, um, you know, potentially also some repeat business with that existing customer. Plus, everything that we've already said, because if you've got all of those other points in place, you know, getting them talking about you, getting feedback, making them feel special, you are far more likely to convert that into repeat business, so everything that we talked about up till now. So we'll get them back again. Now what? We want to keep them being impressed because they've been impressed enough to come back. We want to keep it that way, don't we? So how do we now do that? So first of all, first thing we can do remember them and utilize the information that we have. You know, most of us these days, we accept that at some point, if we're going if, if to part with our personal details with people, that you think somewhere along the line, that's going to be held on a database. But despite the fact they have all that information on their database, do they use it? Yep, some of them do for mailing out stuff that we don't want to hear about. Some of them send out stuff that is actually totally irrelevant to what we've already bought from them. So when we're going to use that, make sure that it is relevant. But what are the things actually that, what else, if we're going to actually go back to that business, what else would we like to be see happening? Well, the first thing is actually that glimmer of recognition when you walk through the door. Um, now, I know that with some of your businesses, people will be pre-booking, they will be making appointments with you before they, before they see you. Um, now, if that's the case, when they emotionally phone or email you, you might not remember them. But if you've got your database there, just go back and see what they've had from you before. So there is that recognition. And link in with that. You know, if they're walking through the door or you know that they're coming, if you could say, remember their name. I know it's just such a small thing. But, you know, enough that people like to hear their name. So use their name. But what's just as important is remembering their preferences. So how are you going to make use of, of remembering their preferences? Well, first of all, it puts you in a good position to preempt what they're likely to want from you. And if you know, if, they've, if you've had a discussion with them in the past about they like X, Y, and Z, but you don't happen to have X or Y in stock at the moment, have that conversation with them so they don't have a wasted journey. Or let them know that you don't do that anymore. That's not part of your package anymore because you've changed what you, what you do. The mere fact that you've remembered what they've had, which you don't have to keep it all in your head, on your records, then that's, that's already going to, oh, 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 that's really nice, they've remembered. Make suggestions for them. If you know that they like, I'm going to come back to restaurants again because it's just an easy, nice easy way to illustrate it if you know they like a particular type of wine you can make some recommendations if you know that they have a particular interest in one aspect of what you offer again you could say oh I know last time you had X, Y and Z I've got a new product actually available on that would you be interested to hear about it so you're giving them a little bit of a um, you're, you're, you're utilizing the information that you already have which then makes them feel Oh, that's really nice. They've remembered all that detail. You might be able to prompt them. You might be able to remind them. And, you know, the two people who are fantastic at doing this when you order stuff online is, is Amazon. Um, and I don't know about, I can't speak for the other um, supermarkets or grocery shopping, but Okado, when I come to check out, always reminds me of stuff that you saw on my sort of regular order that I might have forgotten. And then I go, oh, yeah, yeah, forgot to order that. Thanks. <laughs> um, so I really appreciate that, that they have remembered. Now, obviously, that's all in a you know, very, very sophisticated um, system. We don't ha necessarily have access to that type of thing. But, you know, just a simple database can keep track of what people have ordered from us last time. And if you know what they normally have, and if they think that they might have forgotten something, then that's, that's great to have for you to be able to prompt them. Remember their special occasions. 
if you know when their birthdays are, um, if you know that this is the anniversary of their company being formed, or it's their AGM, their AGM normally falls this week, or they have their award ceremony around this time of year, then you know remember that, and then you can use that. You know, it's not just about remembering it; it's about utilising it. So if they're coming into your business, help them to celebrate or do something, even if they're not coming into your business, that you do something that shows that you've remembered them, that you've recognised that, and um, you want to help to, them to celebrate, and you might have something that will help them to celebrate as well, which might be an excuse then for coming to see you. I um, heard about a nice little touch on Saturday night. A friend of mine was going to an awards um, ceremony, and in her t hotel room, um, she, um, she took a picture of it for, for me and put it on, on, on Facebook of a little... Um, uh, they get gave her a little cake and they actually just piped good luck on it. Now, I mean that you know, okay, we get that a lot for birthdays and things, but it was just it was for her. It was just a really, really nice touch. And the fact that she then put it on Facebook and said the hotel where it was that, that did it, you know, that's all great PR for that hotel as well. Um, so any little special occasions that you can help them to celebrate, so much the better. Remember their personal interests. So, do they have a family? Do they like to bring their dog in when they, you know, or have they been going through, even if it's stuff that, you know, they may not want to necessarily share the detail. Just the fact that you that you've remembered that detail, you know, so you can have a little bit of empathy with them. Um, or it might be something that's, you know, their sporting interests, anything like that. Because then you've actually two things. First of all, it gives you something that you can then find that you've got in common to talk about. And secondly, it just like, you know, people like to talk about their own interests, so it helps to build that rapport. Now, everything I've talked about so far is talking about remembering and utilizing the data, the, the information that you've got. But I'm going to add in this last thing, I said there were going to be five things that you could, be, you could do to wow them on their next visit. Now, I'm not sure whether this is going to wow people. It's almost an expectation, but I'm going to mention it anyway. And that is that you are as good as, if not better than last time. And I put here consistency plus one. This is the extra 1%. So that every time people come to you, they don't get the same as what they had last time. They get the same plus a little bit more. Now, you don't need to go the extra mile. Just the extra inch or the extra foot can make all the difference. Because the trouble is that when you go the extra mile, it means the next time you come, you've got to have to find something different, something more. You'll burn yourself out. So look for that extra 1% that you can give. That means that they're getting something that's that little unexpected extra that they didn't get last time. And some of you may have heard of me talk about GLUE. So that stands for so G-L-U-E, giving little unexpected extras. So that's the, that's the plus the 1% because they didn't have that last time, so they're not expecting it anymore. Um, if it's something that you, they had last time, they will expect it. It's the norm now. So always look for just that little bit extra that you can do. Okay, so we have looked at six ways. Um, and I'm just going to pop up the, 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 the question box. Um, check if there are any questions and while I'm doing that if you have got any questions just type any questions into the question box anything you'd like to ask about any I'm going to sum, sum them up in just a moment but any of the six things that you thought hang on a minute I'd like an example of that in fact shall I put up the six things and then if you've got any questions it will just prompt you uh, on those questions so what were the six things first of all show you care so engage with them early on, give them all those sort of positive little strokes early on, that, ins that sincere thank you at the end of the transaction, show that you appreciate them right from the outset. Secondly, saying thank you in whatever shape or form that you think that that is appropriate for your customers. So the simplest, easiest way is to say thank you. And, and Fast forwarding to getting people coming back and we said to stay on their radar, that is the easiest way to actually almost break the ice if you like in terms of continuing to stay in touch with them. So it's a great way to do that. But doing un things unexpected for them 
to, that again says thank you, like a referral or any of that type of thing. Asking for feedback, but not just asking for it. Asking for it as if you genuinely are interested and want to hear about it, and that you then are prepared to act on it and let them know what you've acted on. Giving them something that is exclusive, making them feel really special. So we talked about members only events, we talked about previews, we talked about little privileges that aren't available for um, people who aren't customers or maybe only available for a certain level of customer. Fast tracking, access, exclusive access to, to an area or something that's, that's vir a virtual thing that maybe they have access to. Following up, so making sure that you um, stay on people's radar so that you're more likely to get people coming back to you because if they forget who you are, they ain't going to come back. And then finally, that recognition in terms of making sure that you are still wowing them on their second, third, fourth visit. So all of those aspects of recognition, remembering them, remembering what's important to them, remembering their special occasions, remembering their interests, all the personal stuff, and haven't got it up here, but in with that is that remembering what they had last time and giving them that little bit more this time, those little unexpected extras, that little bit of glue that you can add into it. So those are the six ways. Um, I would strongly encourage you to think about, well, what are you going to do next? So just to ask you what's been the most useful part of today's webinar, what do you need to start doing, stop doing, or maybe doing a little bit more of that will really show your customers that you appreciate them? What things can you put into practice tomorrow? So have a little think about that. I'm not going to ask you to answer those things uh, now on the webinar, but talked about giving feedback. And I would love some feedback from you. So this is really what if, I'd love really to hear back from you. And these are uh, some of the things that would be really useful for me. Uh, what you've liked. And I'm going to add in there, what particularly did you take out of today's session? Um, what you'd like more of. And I know that some of you on the call today have been on previous webinars with me, so you'll know what other topics I've covered. But even if you haven't, you know, just let me know, and I can make sure that you know what other stuff's out there what specific topics you'd like covered, and what format you like best. Because I'm um, relatively new to the whole webinar thing, and I would really love to hear what people think about webinars opposed to tele-seminars or actually doing stuff face-to-face -face and in person for those of you who are a little bit more local. So I would absolutely love to get some feedback, and the easiest way to do that is you know, give me a ring or drop me an email. But I'm going to leave that on the screen. Um, in fact, what I'm going to do actually is go back. Whoops. I'm just going to go back to this slide here um, and ask now if anybody has any questions on any of the points that have been covered today or any feedback on any of the questions that are up there now. You're all being very shy. Okay, so I've got a question from Liz. Do you think online polls are successful? Um, Liz, do you mean in this format when you're doing webinars or just generally out there for getting feedback from your customers? Just generally asking for feedback. Um, I, I think a little bit depends on, the, on your audience because, first of all, um, thinking about the sort of format and what they enjoy using. Um, also, whether or not, you know, what, what you're going to do with that information. And the, and the, the challenge sometimes with, with polls is that we talked about asking open questions, and quite often with a poll is you have to ask a closed question. So it ends up being a bit of an either or. So you sometimes then have to then dig down for a little bit more information. So it can sort of get you so far. I mean, I could do a poll, for example, on whether or not people like webinars or not. But it doesn't tell me what type of topics. I guess what I could do is to say, OK, well, of these six topics, what are the things that people would most like to hear about? So you can do it in, in that way. 
Um, had you got any particular format in mind? Uh, for live workshops. Okay. Um, I might follow up with this with you offline if that's okay, Liz. Um, okay, right. Oh, we'll, 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 we'll catch up with this offline if that's okay because I'm not, um, unless it's something that other people would like to hear the answer to, just raise your hand or stick a yes in the question field if it's something that would be useful for others to hear to, to hear about other otherwise we'll, we'll have a chat okay all right any other questions from anybody any other feedback so what's been the most useful thing for you today talk to me everybody <laughs> you're all being very shy either that or very slight, slow, slow at typing Okay, so it is, it's just gone at four o'clock, so um, as I say, you know, do just drop me a line, I'd love to hear your feedback, um, as you know, practice what I preach, I uh, have talked about the importance of getting feedback, so uh, you know, I do genuinely want to hear your feedback, and uh, look forward to speaking to you all very soon, if you're not already signed in for next month's webinar, then um, please do so. Um, in fact, what I'll do with this is I'll just do a reminder with the email that, that goes out later on today with the date of that and the link if you're not already signed up for it because I can't off the top of my head remember the date for it. So um, I will put that in there and, and the topic of next month's webinar. Um, okay, so thank you all very much everybody. Uh, it's Caroline Cooper, Naturally Loyal, signing off. And uh, thank you all very much for joining me today. Bye for now.